Hello, my name is Ash. Uh, in this video, I am just going to run you through um, the way that I set up my FMOD sessions for interactive, interactive game music. Um, so this is one that I haven't actually um, done the music for. I've only done just some, um, some random little tracks uh, so far um, for this game that I'm working on. Um, for this reason, I like to actually map it out in F mode and it gives me a better idea of how the music should interact or how the different tracks should interact with each other. Uh, I think that's very important to um, figure out before writing the music. So uh, this is for a roguelike game. So it's um, a turn-based uh, set in a dungeon uh, destined for Android. Um, yeah, so I've just written, I'm just going to write some like minstrel style uh, music for this. I think I've already done a video on um, a, a scratch track that I did for this game, but uh, the music that is currently in here is a bit different. So basically the way that it's laid out at the moment, and this will probably change as uh, the game develops, is that, uh, oh, firstly I should mention is that uh, an aspect of the game is that you can actually... The player can rewind time briefly, uh, so I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I think the the mechanics are still in development. So uh, it's either um, if you make a mistake, you can rewind a few spots, or possibly uh, you only rewind your actual character and not the enemies. So you can group enemies together, rewind a few spaces so that you're at a distance and then, I don't know, shoot a spell or whatever. Uh, so I wanted some uh, rewind sounds in there. So I just had some music playing backwards um, just to introduce the level and then the music kicks in. So basically, yeah, I'll have that rewind sound. Uh, I've got what I'm calling idle music, which is pretty much what's going to play before you really start doing anything. Once you start doing stuff, the main music is going to kick in um, and then potentially uh, on either certain enemies or maybe when there's a certain amount of enemies on screen, then the intense music will kick in. And then we've also got uh, some sounds for if the player dies and if the player wins. Um, so let's have a listen to the whole thing together. <laughs> So I'm just going to stop it there. So just to explain what that part is, um, I didn't go on to the intense music because I haven't actually written anything for that yet. Um, and it's not actually necessary for what I'm about to explain. Um, so basically, yeah, just idle music. Uh, I've got this, um, oh, I should explain this uh, parameter knob that I've got up here, which I've named it intensity. Uh, so I've just got this going from zero to five. Uh, the starting value is at one, which is what will trigger the idle music. Uh, then switching it to two, we'll do the main music. Three, intense music. Four, player death. Five, player win. Um, so you will also notice that there's a main music one and a main music two. The reason for this is that I wanted the music to kind of write itself. Um, the way that I've gone about this is that I've got a main uh, part which repeats which is gonna which I'm counting as like the main melody the same like the way that a chorus would be in a in a pop song um, so that has a loop but it also has a uh, transition marker uh, to main music too so but on this transition marker 
if I bring up here, is actually only got a 60% probability. So by all means, if that's not triggered, then that main riff will actually loop again. Um, but otherwise, it'll go to main music two, which is actually a multi-sound. There's only one track in there at the moment, but basically my idea is to have a few tracks in there so that each time it goes to there, it might land on a different track and then that will always go back to main music one. So basically like, it just won't be the same thing constantly repeating, which is what I want just to break up the monotony, uh, which can happen in some music, in some game music. Um, so you also would have noticed uh, some uh, transition uh, timelines opening up. So if I open that one up, you can, and just zoom in a bit. You can see in there that I've just got, um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's the one there. So basically just a little transition riff and then just bringing in the first uh, couple of beats of the next track of the main music two and basically done the same thing back to main music one just with a different little transition riff so so all of these have a uh, transition um regions um and some of some of them have uh, some transition riffs. Some don't. You can see that from the little dots up here. If they do have uh, actual transition riffs, and then I've also set it up. If you go to here, that I've got a quantization uh, interval of just um, of just half notes. There, uh, I did have it as uh, one bar, but I noticed that it was just a bit too drawn out. Um, if other things were to happen, say if you were to go to like the win or death, not that you really need to from idle, but just to make sure that there's no kind of buggy stuff where, you know, you go to the player death or you want to go to the player death, but you know, maybe the animation has already happened by the time that the sound actually starts. So, which is, um, a bit glitchy, which is not too nice. So, uh, so the ones to say death, there's uh, no quantization interval. They just go straight to that one. So I can actually give you a demonstration of that. I'll just play a bit. So you can see there, um, you're gonna either transition to the death um, and that'll take you straight back to idle music, but I obviously had put it back to main music, which skips it straight back there and also with win uh, back to the idle music. Um, so I just had the idea with the two of those, um, gonna get rid of that. Uh, for the player death, just for kind of the band to fall over, they're like shocked at the death of the player, of the hero, and so they just kind of dropped their instruments um, I thought that was kind of a, uh, it's a light-hearted kind of main character um, for this game. So I thought that would be a good feel for it. Uh, I might just get rid of that transition there. Um, and also the win, I just thought a fanfare, but that is obviously temporary that I just really quickly just played a few notes on my trumpet and chucked it with some reverb. Um, yeah, so pretty simple. Now, the other thing you might notice is that I've got some extra tracks down here and I've also got a parameter called reverse up here. But I would like to talk about something else first um, before I go into that. Because basically, with the concept in the game where you can, um, where you, the player has the ability to rewind time, I wanted to actually have you know, some music rewinding. I wanted like a tape rewind sound for that. So I was trying to figure out a few different ideas and like talking with the game designer as to how to actually go about it. 
Um, so my initial idea, which I'm not, I'm most likely not going to use, but I will run through it anyway, is if I just go into my mixer, uh, my idea was to use a snapshot, which I've called reverse. Just take a second to actually load. There we go. So you saw on the mixer previously that everything was just a uh, Unity volume um, or zero dB. And so for this snapshot, I've just dropped down all of the music. So all of these are either routed through the effects or the music. Um, so I've got, yep, the music and then just dropping the effects a little bit as well. And if I just open up another, you know, if it didn't open it up for me. Let's get another event editor open so we can grab this one. So basically the idea is that when that uh, when we want to do the rewind sound, then we call this event, which is called music rewind. And what's in there is a multi-sound, bring that deck back up. Uh, that's got a bunch of reversed tracks in there that will play randomly and that will uh, then we've just brought in that reverse snapshot which will drop the volume of the music and effects and just for a bit of uh, fade and consistency uh, just um, some automation on the intensity of that so I'll actually just cycle through and show you what that would have been like Now, with that, there's um, something that you may have noticed was that when the tracks, when the reverse tracks played, uh, some of them sounded clearly different from the normal tracks that were playing. So it's clearly not the same track being reversed. And uh, in conversations with the game designer, he put me onto a game called Braid. Uh, which is a really great game. I just um, I didn't get a chance to actually play it, but I watched some gameplay videos and it looks amazing. But basically, uh, it seemed like they were physically reversing the game. So all the sounds that just happened were playing backwards. And I had no idea how they do it, but I wanted to get a similar effect. And I figured the best way is because I've got all these different music tracks, which aren't actually very long, um, what I could actually do is just grab that track, reverse it, chuck it on a different, chuck it on a different audio track, and same for the others. Uh, I've even done this within uh, the actual transitions as well. Uh, so then, what I've done is made this little parameter here, call which I've called reverse. Now I can bring that up. So. Actually, I'll bring that up in this window so you can see that I have made the automation. So when it is at zero, which is down here, all of these tracks are at their full volume except for the reverse tracks. And then when it is at one, all of those are at zero while the reverse goes up. Very, very simple. Um, the only thing that I found was in doing some of the automation is that some of the times when I was in uh, Main Music 2 and jumped to play a death, that would keep on playing, which is why you can see all the automation here has been turned down, except for the death and win sounds. Um, that's the only reason for that. But basically, uh, the other thing that I need to mention on this, um, reverse parameter is I've set the seek speed. Um, so it's about uh, was it like 70 milliseconds or something like that. 
uh, just so it sort of fades, so it's not like instantaneous, so you don't get any of those pops or anything nasty or anything glitchy. Uh, so um, I probably won't need to use it on the idle music because when the player is doing things, that music won't be playing. But I have put it there just for the sake of it because I don't know how the game's going to pan out at this stage. But let's run through it again and actually put in some rewind sounds. Well, that was interesting. Uh, I don't know why those two plaques, tracks played over the top of each other. Perhaps um, my screen recording software is playing with F mod a bit and glitching it out, but um, I'll have to look into that anyway. But you see the idea of basically how it sounds like the track that, or what you've, the music that you've just heard is physically uh, rewinding, um, even though Technically, it's not. Um, it is still giving that basic uh, perception. Um, there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about, which I have a mind blank on. Um, that's okay. I'm. If I do think of it, I might have to pop it into another video. Uh, that was about it for this video. Um, just to give you an idea of just how to lay out an fmod session before you actually have the music and um, it's a good way to actually map things out with the game designer i'll actually be having the game designer watch this video uh, so that we can discuss it a bit further uh, but anyway uh, for now cheers <laughs>